And here is veteran Justin Turner, 34-year-old perennial MVP candidate for the L.A. Dodgers. Injury-riddled year last season, Rich. He hit 312 with 14 homers, 52 runs batted in. And lucky for us, he has brought that beard and mustache with him as well. <laughs> it looks like it possibly is trimmed a little bit. Well, Turner, Kurt hit a home run in the opener against the White Sox last year in this very date uh, for the first inning solo shot off Dylan Covey. So uh, they got off the Dodgers off to a good start. They won that game last year. I mentioned 13-5 to in the opener. Turner didn't join the Dodgers until mid-May last year. Remember, he had a quad problem. They really missed him at third base. That opened up the door for other guys. Kike Hernandez plays over there and well, Max Muncie would come up a little bit later on, but you know, with one guy out, that gives another guy a chance to make a roster and earn his way into the big leagues. Donnie Roach comes home. That pitch is inside. Infield this time plays fairly straight up the middle. Second baseman Sanchez, this time on the right side of second. Looks like his feet are on the outfield grass. Outfield to the right. The center fielder is John Jay. There's Turner, that odd batting stance. Look at that toe, Rich. The toe is on the ground. The heel is off the ground. A swing and a line drive base hit to left center field. It'll run. Jay will chase at the base of the wall. Jay looking for his cutoff man. Finds him, but Turner does what Turner does. <laughs> base hit his first at bat of spring training. It's a double. Rich Hill, what a story. 38 years old, 11-5 and five last year for the Dodgers. He has been around is a general statement. We'll get to that in a moment. He's left-handed, 6'5", 220. Grew up in Boston, Mass. And of course, people in Chicago familiar with him. Yep. Probably associated with the Cubs more than any of his other 13 or so organizations. And John Jay will lead it off. Possible new starting center fielder for the White Sox. Takes low, and the last of the first is underway. With Kansas City and Arizona, remember the Diamondbacks were making a push for the playoffs last year. So after starting the year with the Royals, the Diamondbacks made a deal for Jay. Swats one foul left side. Batted 268 between the two clubs with three homers. Knocked in 40. And uh, National League fans will remember him. Made his mark rich with the Cardinals. Cardinals, and that's where he grew up in their system. I mentioned earlier he was a friend, he is a friend of uh, Machado, and he got all kinds of interviews because of Machado in camp. People asking what's going to go on, and of course he had no answers. Uh, it's up to Machado, <laughs> obviously. But no, another nice guy. I mean, you know, mentioned Rich Hill. He was with the Cubs in 2005, Kurt, and in that year the White Sox, of course, won the World Series. And that year with the Cubs, the 05, he was 0-2, a very fat 9.13. But he's had a long, long career. 18 years for pro ball. This is 18th for the lefty. That big breaking ball that he throws, a slider and a fastball. Good pitch to take for Jay as he shows that he has seen quality lefties before. Outfield to the left. Infield straight up. We'll go defensively in a moment. Let's look at one more pitch to veteran John Jay. 4-0 Dodgers lead the White Sox last of the first. There's that big curveball right. and he hammers it in for strike three. Call. Played with To me, my roots Growing up in New York, you played, you were with teammates for a long time. You know Reggie Jackson probably as well as anybody. <laughs> yeah. He's iconic. The name represents baseball. What can you tell me about Reggie that I don't know? Oh, golly. Reggie, uh, he, was, he was a great guy. I got along with him real well. Um, he stayed with me uh, here in Birmingham for about a month. He couldn't find a place to live, so uh, he, I had an extra room at my apartment. It's Reggie will also be a part of your lore because of this. Yeah, Reggie started the mustache. He came to spring <laughs> training in 72 with a mustache and, and wouldn't shave it off. And so myself and Catfish Hunter, Daryl Knowles, there was about three of us decided to grow mustaches. And we figured if we grow them, Dick Williams was our manager. He would say, okay, guys, cut it off. And Reggie would have to cut his off. But uh, Charlie Finley, our crazy owner, he thought uh, mustaches was a great idea. And so he told everybody on the ball club, if you make the team opening day, you got a mustache, you get 300 bucks. And that's the only reason why I grew this. 300 bucks. 300 bucks. stayed. Yeah, it stayed. <laughs> well, it's tough to cut it off after winning the World Series three in a row, right. so I kept it.
Do you have pictures of you? Does anybody have pictures? Is there anything, with, uh, anybody have proof that you actually weren't born and raised with a mustache? <laughs> well, my first three or four baseball cards uh, in 69, 70, and 71 were no mustache. Let's go get Welcome back to our Baron Spotlight. Our guest here is Chipper Jones as we kind of go outside the box. And the reason we got him here, we'd love to talk about uh, the potential of a Hall of Fame and who the greatest pitcher he ever faced and the greatest hitter, but this is it right <laughs> here. And uh, it looks like you and everybody thought real hard and long about the name. So <laughs> let's start with the name ball player. Why not Chipper Jones, my life in baseball? It just became very simple, ball player, why? I think uh, ultimately the, the greatest compliment you can have uh, someone talk about you or your career is to say that you were a ball player. Um, there are people who play baseball, and then there are ball players, and that's what I always strove for. Um, whenever I uh, see a guy and, and I'm talking about him, that's what, uh, and, and I like him a lot. That's how I will describe him, down and dirty. You know, uh, uh, go out there and try and win every single baseball game. That's a ball player. It just seemed fitting. You could call it a grinder then, because you've, <laughs> you've described what a grinder is. Would you consider yourself as a player and as a person a grinder? Um, I wouldn't say a grinder. Um, I would say uh, a worker, um, you know, but, you know, there's so many different, you know, terms that could be used uh, as a flattering way of describing uh, a baseball player. I thought this well, thing. Ball I, the I best. think this, that encompassed everything. All right. You mentioned that it took you about two and a half years. Now, when you were playing, you didn't look for the spotlight. You, no. it, it got you because of your your ability, obviously. Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of surprised that it came out this early in your post career. As Why? Was, so, I, so the, as was I. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I never, uh, you know, even thought that. It, this opportunity would arise. I never had any interest in personally writing a book. So, but when Carol Rogers Walton um, approached me about the opportunity, it was something that I had to marinate on mm -hmm. uh, for a little bit because, like you said, I'm not the most uh, outgoing guy in the world and, and not really willing to let people in. Uh, but it seemed like a good uh, opportunity to, um, I felt like I had a lot of cool stories to tell. Um, I could set the record straight in uh, certain instances and um, ultimately uh, talk about one of my more favorite topics in life and that's hitting a round ball with a round bat a lot. <laughs> as well by Alabama State and here come UAB down by six but a nice return in the making. Good go all the way, couple of moves. Myron Mitchell still on his feet and he dives for the end zone. Touchdown, 99 yards for Mitchell. Joshua Hill, the return man. Greenwell kicks it high. And then Hill right at around the 20. Makes his way north, and he puts the ball on the ground at Legion Field. There's a flag. The Blazers will get possession. There's also a flag, Chad. That's likely going to be an illegal block against Alabama State. Hill hesitates a little bit, does a great job of getting north and south, picking up some nice yardage, but then a great job of getting your hand on the football. That's Larry Wooden for UAB that comes up with the strip. The Blazers recover and have great. Johnston's got a couple of receivers to his left. Hayden on the handoff. No, it's Johnston by himself. Johnston on the keeper. That was an excellent fake. Be out of my cleats, and I'm not wearing cleats. Joshua Knight was in place to make the play. Excuse me, Thomas was in place to make the play, but a great move that time. He was injured in 14, but 35-0 and 0 as a starter. And he will go to the air looking for his man. Caught! Touchdown! UAB! Kendall Parham! Quick fake looking down the field. No doubt to where he was going. Gets in the end zone to par him. Great use of his hands. Touchdown, UAB. Dickey. 
Nice defense by Allen. And with that lack of depth, you're going to have to worry about a couple things. Offensive tackles playing basketball. Reverse by Sharkey is good. Oh, just an explosive move to draw by and then. Two bodies, by the way, on Sharkey. You talked about that, not Miller. There's Austin from outside. Austin Sanford all out trying to steal it. Robinson will run, then find Dupree. Dupree, mid-range, got it. Dupree's got a nice little jumper. UNCG, their defensive pressure. You see how hard Sanford has to work for their buckets. Dupree able to finish, but... Sharkey has two of the three for them. And Sharkey will try the three ball, and he's got it. Basket is good, and then... Sharkey using the jet. Oh, my! Answer the three-point play. Good ball movement. Three ball, Austin. He's had a good shooting game. They've been perfect taking care of the ball, but they've been pretty solid with it down there. Logan Dye floats one in to yeah. tie the game up. Right off the bench, they went right to the big. Dupree. Little bump and run. 